We're going to learn how to add records to a Notion database using Pipedream. Here you can see we have a database called Contacts, and it has three columns, a name, an email, and some tags. Now, for some terminology, in Notion, a column on a database is known as a property. Now that we understand there's a Contacts database, and it's underneath the Pipedream page, let's head back to Pipedream. And let's look for the HTTP in inbound webhook requests. Let's copy and paste this. I'm going to use hopscotch as an example here, but so we're going to say the name is Weston Pierce, the email is weston at pipedream.com, and we're going to send it to our brand new HTTP endpoint. We got a response back that says success true, and now we can select this event in our workflow, and under the body section, we can see our name and our email coming in. Now we'll add another step to our workflow so we can create a new record based off this information coming into our workflow. I'm going to search for Notion. And the action we're looking for is create page from database. We're going to connect our Notion account using the connect a Notion account option here. A new prompt will come up to ask us which pages we'd like to share. In this case, the database exists under the pipe dream page under my workspace. So I'll just allow access to that. And now our Notion account is connected. Next, we have to select the database underneath this page. So here we can open up and voila, Pipedream found our database called Contacts. So we'll just select that. And then the meta types adds an icon and a, color, a cover if you choose, but I'm gonna skip right to the property types. These are the properties or columns in our database. And I'm going to select the email and name. The tags are optional. I don't want to enter those for this example. The page content appears beneath the columns. So we'll just put um, some sample content. This is a new contact from the pipe dream workflow. And the email address is from our HTTP request. And how we connect the HTTP request data to this action is by opening up this dropdown and in the trigger step is the beginning step in our workflow. The event is an HTTP request and underneath the event, you'll find the body which contains the data passed from our hopscotch request into Pipedream. So we can select the name. This will inject that data into our record. And now we can also do the same thing for the name property. Oh, I got it backwards. So email and then name. So we can search for name in this nice search menu and then select the name. And now we'll click test. What this will do is we'll read the data from the body of the HTTP request and then inject those fields as a new page in our database. And here we could say that page was created successfully. I head back to Notion. And look at that, we have a brand new record. Now, if we open this record, we could see the columns were put in properly. And we have that static content added to the bottom of the record. Now, you're not just limited to using HTTP requests to create new pages or records within your Notion databases. You can use Google Calendar, you can use a Webflow website contact form, you can use any of our hundreds of triggers to pass data into your Notion databases programmatically without actually using code.